Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello friends and colleagues. Uh, my name is Nurhami Mizanuddin from USIM. Today I would like to share with all of you about uh, hutagogy, piragogy and cybergogy uh, from my uh, understanding. So in Amanat 2018, um, team Higher Education 4.0 knowledge industry and humanity uh, the 2018 mandate from higher education minister datuk sri dejusuh is centered on embracing the fourth industrial revolution or industry 4.0 as part of the call of revamp the malaysian higher education system so you can see here the learning spaces um, okay the pedagogy fluid and organic curriculum technologies so what really attracts me is people keep on asking what is hutagogy, paragogy or piragogy and cybergogy. So uh, for today's presentation, I would like to emphasize more on uh, what is hutagogy, uh, piragogy and cybergogy at surface level. So this is what I understand from um, uh, these uh, three jargons or buzzword from the Yang Muhammad Menteri. So actually, uh, HUTA means encourages uh, learners to become more self-directed. PIRA from PEER focuses on co-learning or co-creating and cybergogy or cyber encourages learner engagement in an online environment. So basically, according to uh, Hayes and Kenyon uh, in 2007, HUTAGOGY refers to the study of self-determined learning. That means uh, the student as a learner, they can decide what types of subject, what types of curriculum, what types of uh, learning style they are having right now to suit the learning needs and uh, as well as the curriculum served or offered by the university. So, this methodology actually applies a holistic approach to develop or developing learning capabilities with the learning serving as the major agent in their own learning. So as I said before, um, in Hyotagogy approach, students are the driver. Okay, So we as educators, we put the student in the driver's seat. So now from the pedagogy to andragogy for adult learning, we would like to move to hutagogy where the learners are problem finders. In PBL, normally we ask uh, educators or lecturers will give or will be the problem finders and the student will be the problem solver. But in hutagogy, we give the student or learners the autonomy to be the problem finders so the lecturers and educators will be just uh, a coach for them. That means now we don't say that uh, we don't give them fish because tomorrow they will ask for more fishes. But we give them fishing rod instead. But now I would like to suggest that we give them fishing rods and we give them the compass and the map as well as the instruction so they uh, they, they will know where to fish and when to fish and how to fish. So the role of the teacher and educators will be transferred or will be transformed from just a pedagogue to facilitator becoming a coach. Okay, so this is uh, the differences between self-directed learning and self-determined learning. Uh, by Jackie Granston and Robert Schwartz. So self-directed learning more towards andragogical. Self-determined learning is hutagogical. Self-directed learning more on content focus, but self-determined learning, uh, we are talking more about process. Okay. Single loop here, double loop, linear, non-linear, competency, but in self-determined learning, we are talking about capability. But I think uh, in Malaysian context, we can uh, combine 
more uh, two or more uh, expect or element from self-determined and self-directed learning. But we need to first address the types of learners and their style and preferences. Pedagogy, or what we am said as paragogy, came from the word peer means peer learning is an educational practice in which student in students interact with other students to attain educational goals. So I think it's just a rebranding of the word collaborative and cooperative learning. But now they call it pedagogy. That means students can learn not just from the lecturers, but they need to learn and learn how to get knowledge from their peers. In pedagogy, it's an open learning environment as a new way of seeing and collaborating and learning. In open, uh, it often uh, put as a unstructured in practice. So now we, we call it a structured in practice, but in pedagogy, normally it, it will lead to the unstructured in practice and learning is collaborative, not just cooperative or contributory. Some students, they say, yes, 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 in class, when a lecturer asks question, they will answer yes, no, but they don't know how to um, describe why they say yes, why they answer yes and no. So they need to learn how to be collaborative, not just cooperative and just contributory. Pedagogy increases the accessibility to online networks and it enables the development of collaborative learning, which is in turn build skills and competencies. So now, um, employers out there, they emphasize more on skills and competencies rather than the degrees and the certificates. Okay. Um, so for me, uh, pedagogy is very important because this kind of environment can bring, uh, can upskill the skills, they call they don't call it soft skill right now, they call it smart skill and competencies needed in a learning community. According to Ringo, uh, 2014, peer learning and peer production are probably as old as humanity itself. So we call in Bahasa Melayu, ini bukanlah uh, penjana, bukanlah perkara baru. It's just a rebranding, penjanaan semula sahaja. Because uh, it is as old as humanity itself, but they take on new importance or new new names in the digital age. So what pedagogy has to offer? So number one, it change or it changes changing context as a decentered center. Number two, meta learning as a form of knowledge. We are talking about bite size, nugget size of contents so when uh, students get the knowledge they can know which type of knowledge is this it's a tested knowledge tested knowledge it is coming from research it's coming from the discussion and then uh, maybe this knowledge only for uh, uh, some uh, learning preferences this knowledge uh, can be modified can be used reused redistribute for um, out, uh, out, uh, for verbal learners, for auditory learners, kinesthetic learners, and so on and so forth. Number three, peers provide the feedback. See, so when we throw up, throw up the question, the feedback and the answers should be coming from the peers themselves. And learning is distributed and non-linear. So that means when we ask some question, when we do quizzes, pair, think and share, student can find the answers and the feedback, reflections, not just from the peers, from the same class, from the same class, but they can find answer from the peers outside the class, from other university, from other institution, even from other countries. Cybergogy. A descriptive level for the strategies for creating engaged learning online, according to Wang and Kang, 2006. Cybergogy, uh, in Cybergogy, we would like to try and create, to create actually, learner-centered 
autonomous and collaborative with virtual learning environment. See, so from the Hiltagogy, self-determined, so student will be the driver. We put them in driver seat. From Hiltagogy, they will learn on how to collaborate and cooperate with other peers. So from Hiltagogy, they go to Piragogy. So now, beyond the four walls of the class, using the online platform, there will come the Cybergogy. So I think it is uh, very interconnected for from Hiltagogy, um, Piragogy and Cybergogy. Right? So in Cybergogy, learners' thinking, behavior and emotion are deeply connected. See? to the culture of computers, technology, and the internet. So this is a model from Wang and Kang from the paper Cybergogy for English Learning. So we have a cognitive factors, social factors, and emo uh, emotion or emotive factors in an online learning environment. So when students know what they can determine, in Malay they call um, mereka boleh menentukan apa yang mereka nak belajar Apa kurikulum mereka nak belajar Dengan siapa mereka nak belajar Dan ilmu apa yang mereka ingin uh, Tekankan atau pelajari So from hitagogy We go to pedagogy So when they get the knowledge they, they, uh, they can determine whatever they want to have They want to learn So they will find their learning community Peer to peer In an online environment So I think we cannot just practice hutagogy only, we cannot practice pedagogy only, and we cannot practice cybergogy only in silo. We need to jive all of them. So I think uh, Prof. Amin Mbi from UKM already uh, conducted uh, a few workshops on hutagogy, and Professor Madia or Associate Professor Dr. Wan Zuhani from UPM already uh, conducted a session on cybergogy. So I, I hope uh, more educators and academics in Malaysia will um, create more publication, more seminars and more uh, talk session to, to discuss on how we can leverage technology uh, to support these three pedagogies. So last but not least, uh, I would like to, call, uh, to quote from John Davy. If we teach today's students as we taught yesterday's, I mean yesterday's student, we rob them of tomorrow. Right, so thank you very much. Shukran Jazeelan. Um, uh, I hope to, to uh, receive more comments from the academics. So uh, at least uh, this kind of video will, get, will give some lights to the uh, young academics uh, like me to understand uh, what do we really means by uh, what it really means by hitagogy piragogy and cybergogy thank you very much again assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and have a nice day